Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to talk about explaining the audiogram. Coming right up. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about this. We've had to run this same video. This is the third time because we've had some microphone problems. So we're gonna get through this one. Okay, so here's one of the things that happens. You see these little squiggling lines on this little chart. If you've ever had your hearing test and you're like, what? And then some people try to put it out there as if you just <coughs> osmosisly know. And you go, going, I don't know what this means. And then they say, and I have this conversation quite a bit, they say things like mild to moderate, uh, sloping to a severe sensory neural hearing loss in both ears, or they say bilaterally. Now that's what I would write in a report for some person maybe. And you go, is that communication? You see, sometimes we try to <coughs> take our technical knowledge and translate that back to you. I remember a, a story. Um, my first, I first, I've been doing this field for 32 years, but I've owned my practice for 17-ish. Okay, and, um, and I'm, I'm sitting there listening to my bookkeeper ask a question. So she asks a question, I write it down. She goes, you need to ask the accountant. Great, call up the accountant. I said, da 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 I'm just reading it out here. And she goes, does she mean da 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 And I mean, all these, you know, and they were accounting ease, these stupid words that I didn't know enough about. And I said, can you, I don't know, can you guys just talk to one another and answer the question for me because I don't know what you're talking about. That is how a lot of people feel in our field. They look at this stuff and then they think they understand it because they only have a piece of that information. But I want to kind of break this down and we'll talk about it in a very unique way. So here's what we do. Eh, let's use a different color, sorry. <coughs> Okay, so we're gonna use my black pen here. Again, I don't draw pretty. You'll have to live with it. Okay. Now, what happens on the chart on the top, it goes from <coughs> 250 hertz, I'll explain that in a second, to 8,000 hertz. Again, I'll explain that in a second. Moves from zero dB down to 110 dB. And I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, so what happens, you see this on the chart. Now, I'm gonna kinda set these zones out and then I'm gonna break them down. The first zone is zero, <coughs> but about zero to 25, <laughs> is in the basically normal area. At around 50, I actually kind of call this, and if you're an audiologist or other, a purist, you're gonna freak out, calm it down, <sighs> breathe, okay? Don't hyperventilate. I call this a need help kind of problem. Do you know why I call it need help? Because you need help, okay? Down here is at the 90 decibel line, and this is called a severe problem. I didn't say severe hearing loss. I know some of you are going, but calm, okay? Down below, it's called a profound hearing loss. Okay, and so we have these basic zones. These are my explanation zones, okay? Now, let's detail them out of here. <coughs> the top area is stated in Hertz, which is called frequency. And you go, uh, yep, I don't know what that means. Got it? 250 is middle C on the piano. So you walked over, piano, poop, popped middle C. 
you have got that first pitch. Now it's a relatively higher pitch. People go, that's a, that's a low pitch. You know, that's like bass of a man. Not exactly, okay? It's really hard to sing that pitch. Actually, I used to have a four octave range. Not anymore, but that's a higher pitch than you realize, okay? Now, at 250 hertz, the other way to call this is, whoops, is pitch. Okay, so a higher pitch is up here and a lower pitch is down here and every change is an octave up. Okay, an octave is what we do. Like you're thinking about your do, re, mi when you think about singing a, um, from Sound of Music. Okay, <coughs> now the second side over here, uh, we'll use my green pen again. On the second side, we have decibels, okay? We're gonna need to separate those out into three basic areas because engineers, when they hear decibels, they just, they, they lock into it. My dad's an engineer, so he would, he would do the same thing. Okay, here's, there's three different terms for decibels. It's called IL, I'll just use a different pen here, sorry, that's a hard one to read. DBIL is the least used in most circumstances. Now, only engineers would do this. And this is called a power log. The doubling effect is three decibels. Now, let me explain what that actually means. So, let's just say this remote control, and we're thinking that we're testing the, the the volume of sound trans transmitting, and it's, a, and it's an electrical terminology, because you can't, you can't have a sound level meter and check that, okay? You're doing it electrically from one spot to another. <coughs> if it's doubly loud, it's only up three decibels, okay? And that's only done in engineering standards, okay? The second one, is called SPL. SPL is the scientific one. And its doubling effect is 6 dB. Now this is where engineers kind of get really upset with me because they think they're, they look at this audiogram over here and they think that it's written in dB SPL. And the answer is no, it's not. Now, how do you explain dBSPL? Let me give you an example. Let's use my little remote control. <clears throat> let's say this is a sound level meter. And let's say, to use an example of philosophy of 101, if a tree falls in a wood and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? I mean, I remember hearing this in philosophy 101 of freshman year, I'm like, what? Who cares, right? Okay. Philosophers care and, and you know, DBSPL engineers, engineers love to talk about this too. But the answer is it does make a sound, but there's no human there or animal or whatever to hear it, let's say, okay? So you're taking that little sound level meter and you're trying to find scientifically what is that sound. When you come up to zero dB, that means there's zero sound available. So zero dB over here is no electrical energy. On zero dB SPL, it's also no sound, but it's no sound like you would have in space. Let me give you an example. <coughs> I'm a huge sci-fi fan. And there are, if you watch Star Trek, in Star Wars, you're gonna see them have these battles and, and sounds going on with the lasers and photon torpedoes and on and on. And they have uh, quantum torpedoes in Star, Star Trek if you get to the later series points. And they're not explaining it as perfectly as you wish because if you're in space, you wouldn't hear that kind of sound go on. Now there are a couple series uh, Babylon 5, a little bit older one, and a little bit newer one called Battlestar Galactica in around 2004, 
I think it ended in 2009, if I remember right. And they tried to be a little bit better with that. The only time that the sound would happen, because space doesn't travel with sound. I don't care if I spoke out as loud as I wanted to, it's not going to travel because there's no sound or there's no sound pressure. Okay, we're talking about air molecules to give the sound out. Now, what happens is that they would, they would have an explosion and you could hear just like a quick whoosh, boom, pop. Okay, and that's probably all you'd hear, but you have to be right up against it. All you would just do is see it happening. Now, they, uh, for dramatic effect, they got a little, they added a little bit more stuff. And again, it's not correct exactly. Now, when we talk about doubling, most people think this is how they, they consider doubling. If I have a 50 decibel sound and I'm going to double it, or excuse me, if I'm going to double it, it's going to be 100 decibels. And the answer is no, it's not. Okay. If I take that 50 dB sound and I put it in dBIL, it's only 53 decibels, which is doubly loud. And I know people go, but that doesn't make sense. That's how it's, that's how it's done. Okay. In dB SPL, it only takes six decibels to make it 56. Or that is doubly loud in dB SPL. And I know you're going, so what? I just wanted to learn about this. Well, you have to know what this thing means over here because you're going to get tested. 20% of all Americans have hearing loss, okay? That's a huge number of people who are getting these hearing tests. They don't have a clue what it means, okay? I'm trying to break it down for you. Then we have this thing called DBHL. DBHL is what these audiologists, crazy audiologists try to use. And what we're trying to explain to you is that this whole audiogram is built in DBHL. What we're trying to do is figure out what the brain does, how the body perceives sounds. So, this is an audiology type of term. And the doubling effect is 10 decibels. Well, in our process here, let's explain the difference. I'm going to give you an example of my wife, and we're going to move it over. Actually, <coughs> do that. I'll take that back. We're going to give an example of this kid that came into my office in, I think it was 1995. Don't get me wrong on that one. But she, and, and here's what was happening. Oops, did the wrong kind of color because I'm going to talk about her right ear. Okay. Red for the right ear. Okay. And let's just say, now I never tested her before she had this event. And I'll explain that in a second. But let's just say she has perfect hearing. Now she's 18 years old. Okay. And she works at the McDonald's across the street. She comes over to me with her dad and she's going to make millions or a million. I think. I, I don't know what was in her brain, but you could just see their, their eyes spinning like they were all calculating here. Pretty funny. So she says, well, that I went to, I'm, you know, worked the drive through and the door at the McDonald's like shut, went shut. And she had a ringing sound over there and she felt a difference in her hearing. Okay. So let's just make up a term amount that she might have gone down because I never saw her in that phase either. The funny thing is, is that she might have been down, let's just say 15 decibels. And if we take that same point here, she probably noticed a 150% worse hearing. Now, here's why you go, why didn't you catch it? Because after about 16 hours of getting away from that particular sound and being calm, which is that she came in a couple days later, her hearing had already recovered. That's what happens to ears, okay? And so what happens is that she might have seen a 15 decibel drop and she's thinking, oh, and she told her dad and her dad says, we're gonna get you tested because at the same basic time frame, 
they did, we didn't have uh, you know coffee cups or any kind of thing holders in our cars. They used to make these things that would kind of flip off the off the side of your uh, your window, and you would kind of shove it in the window frame. Now, this woman, <coughs> and I believe it was in Phoenix, she has a coffee cup between her legs, and she gets the coffee cup from from McDonald's, and it's got scalding co coffee, and she burns her legs. She sues for a million dollars and wins it. Now, I don't know if it ever, ever fully went through with appeals or anything, but that's what's in this kid's mind. You could just hear it. And when I tell her her hearing is perfect, which it was in that right ear and the left ear, <coughs> she's having a fit. And the dad, I mean, she's apoplectic, but the dad is like, you did this wrong. Uh, that's what I did my feel for. Sorry, they come in a couple days later, want me to test them again. I'm like, I'm gonna charge you again for a second test, but it's gonna come up the same way. Exactly what I did, it came up exactly the same way. And it, they were upset about this. What am I saying? Even when she was in here, she was in the basically still normal range. Do you catch that? So I was testing her at all the different pitch points and she's zero to 25, as she probably was in the basically normal range, okay? Don't know for 100% fact, but she recovered, okay? That's what happens to the cool part of hearing. Now, when a person drops in, we'll use my blue pen now, into this kind of range, which is pretty darn well what my hearing is, for a lot of other reasons, when your marks start showing up down here in the 25 to 50 range, it means you need help. And you go, wait, what is it? You need help. It means that you can hear what people say, but you don't understand it. Why? Because you're missing out on the consonant sounds versus maybe the vowel sounds, which tend to be lower pitch range. So we can miss out on the S, the T, the TH, blah, blah, blah. All these different sounds that might be in there and that person's not hearing this. So they feel like people tend to mumble, okay? This is actually in the, what they call a mild to moderate hearing loss. One of the problems that we're struggling in our field right now is idiot senators and congressmen put together a bill with Bose technology called the over-the-counter bill. Now, the bill wasn't the worst bill in, in the world, although I don't believe anything Congress and Senate ever says because they lie so much of the time. And when I communicated with them, they had no clue about any of this stuff. And that's the exact same thing that happens with, uh, with uh, many of the hearing aid manufacturers that were talking to them. I'm not scared of competition. I don't care if you want to buy something, but you need to do it safely. What they came up with in this bill is they said, you can buy an over-the-counter hearing aid. I'm like, so what? This over-the-counter hearing aids are, are things that you buy online and they've been around for 20 years. I could care less. You can buy whatever you want to. You are completely free to do this. But they put in this thing called perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. I'm like, excuse me for cussing here, what the hell is perceived mild to moderate hearing loss? Tell me what that is and I could know what it means. How do you perceive a mild to moderate problem in your, in your, in your muscles? How do you perceive a mild to moderate problem with your ACL, your accruciate ligament, or sorry, anterior cruciate ligament, which I've had torn three different times. How do you perceive it? You need to have a medical person do a diagnostic. But what they did is they said, no, you don't have to do that. 
We're just perceiving a problem. Now, here's the issue. When we move into the severe problem, this person doesn't hear conversational speech and doesn't understand conversational speech. You're seeing me get a little more passionate, aren't you? So when a person moves into this range, this is what a severe problem is. And this is when most people, if we leave them to their own devices, are going to come into my office. This doesn't mean they never come in here, but they perceive maybe a problem and they're going, well, maybe, maybe, I don't know. But most people, if you leave them alone without, without and, and this model point is so bad, the FDA sat there with the hearing aid manufacturers trying to go, hey, listen, you guys can do anything you want to. You can have anyone out there that you want to, but you got to get an evaluation. Is that a hor horrible thing to ask for an evaluation of a person who's considering doing something that's called a medical device that's actually done by the FDA? Now, do you trust your FDA at this point? You shouldn't. Okay. This is the problem because if they had said, well, you need to have an evaluation first, then you can go get an over-the-counter device. No problem. Problem solved. It's all perfect to me. Okay. You will never have a have problem with me as long as you get the evaluation. But they skipped it because they didn't want to. Okay. Now, the people that have a per per perceived problem, this is when they're going to perceive it, when they can't hear and they can't understand. Guess what happens? The over-the-counter hearing aids actually don't work anymore because they're never made to do that much power in the evaluation. Do you see my irritation in there? Because people are led astray. And do you want that? Do you want that for your family members to be led astray? Because I see it on the back end. I see people getting over-the-counter hearing aids and they haven't been evaluated. And it was, I look, look at them like, it's not even close. It's like picking up someone's glasses and you're still doing, I can't see with these glasses. They're a little bit better, but not much. Does that make any sense to you? When my vision was 2100, when I was 19 years old, I remember it's 2100, I just barely passed the driver's test. You, you had to be like 2060. Somehow I got through the driver's test. Don't ask, excuse me, don't ask me how. But when I was 32, before I got my LASIK surgery, I was 2400. And I still had those glasses somewhere. And I picked them up one time and I could, I could see a little bit better with the 2100 vision or lenses, but not enough to be able to see well. Do you catch where I'm going here? Okay. But when you have a severe problem, <coughs> you can't hear and you can't understand. Now, people in the profound range, what we tend to find about them is that they are functionally deaf. It doesn't mean that they don't hear anything. See, when you're at 100 decibels, it doesn't mean you have 100% hearing loss. You see, I didn't tell you a percentage, did I? Did I come over here and say you have X percentage of hearing loss? Well, the AMA, American Medical Association, comes up with a percentage, and it's a, it's a calculator, okay, that you would do. And I think we're on the fourth edition, if I remember right. And <clears throat> now the AMA, will, you, I can do a calculation, but it's an Algebra 2 calculation that I've got to do with all of your testing frequencies and put it together, plug it into that, there you go. And the only people that care about this are people in workman's comp issues and the VA. Now the VA does their own number. I have no idea what it is, okay? Don't ask me what it is because we're not allowed to do it. We'll do the evaluations, we have to write up a basic report, but they do the calculations there because they have their own calculators available, okay? So I cannot answer that question. I don't care how many times you ask it, okay? So when we do this, we're calculating your hearing loss and we're trying to explain it. So up here, you're functionally within the borderline normal range. <coughs> here, you can hear but don't understand, and that's why I came up with a terminology called need help. 
in this range here, severe, you can't hear very well and you can't understand. It doesn't mean you never hear the words, but it means that instead of me talking at a normal conversational level, I have to talk to you this loud just so you can kind of hear me. And you know people like that. And then we have people that are functionally in the deaf range. Now, people who are in the deaf range, they might utilize sound, <coughs> but they're not utilizing it <coughs> Excuse me, in the same way that you would imagine. They might be hearing and perceiving sound so that they can hear and be aware of their, their circumstances, and it might help them understand a little bit or hear the sounds a little bit to put it together. But those people have actually relied upon their eyes to make sense of their world. So as we go along here, now you understand that, that this part up here is about the pitch, okay? From low to high, from soft to very loud. And we're talking about DBHL. So I hope that helped you give a little understanding. You might have to watch this a couple times to kind of get the clue. Thank you so much. <laughs>